Hello, and welcome to this month's FDW webinar series, where we talk about solutions for contractors and integrators. Today, we have an awesome subject regarding huddle space and conference room solutions, a really hot topic in the contractor world today. And this is presented today by TOA. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, we do have a question feature in this webinar. Uh, feel free to type in questions on the sidebar. We will be answering them at the end of the presentation. We will also be recording this presentation. If you are unable to uh, view the whole and the whole web series, or if you are unable to attend, um, you can view this at a later time. At the end of the presentation today, there will be a survey. Uh, please fill out the survey. It does help us um, hone these in and, and make them targeted towards what the contractors and integrators are looking for. So let's jump into today's topic. Presenting today from TOA is John King. Uh, John King has been around the industry a while. Uh, how are you doing today, John? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. I could see you, uh, you've you been throughout the industry and in some of our biggest manufacturers. Uh, where are you at today? I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Awesome. Um, so John, it has been in the industry. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I have, uh, I've, I've, I've been doing audiovisual for probably the last 25 years with various different companies. So I've got a pretty good idea of, of where things came from and where they're going to. Awesome. All right. Let's jump into today's subject. Thank you for joining us today. My name is John King. I am the Central Regional Sales Manager for TOA Electronics. I will do a short PowerPoint on the Lanubio, and then Jim McGinnis will do a live demonstration. We will then answer any questions you may have. As many of us have noticed over the last several years, organizations with the need to collaborate have concluded that a dedicated conference room with seating for more than 10 people is both expensive and underutilized. We are seeing educational institutions of all types and companies shift away from traditional conference rooms to smaller huddle spaces. Studies by Forbes, the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School of Business, and the Harvard Press agree that the optimal working group is made up of between three and six individuals. As the number of participants grows beyond six, productivity declines. Managers and employers agree that smaller groups are more productive and huddle spaces are a more comfortable environment to collaborate. Typical huddle room size range from 12 by 12, 12 foot by 12 foot, to 20 foot by 15 foot. A huddle room is equipped with a display, a camera, local PC, or input for a bring your own device, connecting to conferencing solutions like WebEx, Zoom, and Skype. It will also have a tabletop speakerphone for audio. As an alternative, wall-mounted solutions are becoming more popular, replacing the desktop phone with a microphone and speaker placed under the display. This solution frees up desk space and provides more natural conversation as participants are facing the camera while speaking. Introducing the Lanubio, an audio conferencing solution that, that is a wall-mounted soundbar with embedded microphones. The Lanubio provides better sound quality and removes the audio from the tabletop with only one USB cable left on the desktop. It easily integrates with today's Windows 10 and Mac laptops. Steerable array with eight microphones, acoustic echo cancellation, and noise canceling, EQ, and LED lights. This provides a more spacious workplace for the group. In this slide, we'll elaborate on some of the advantages to wall-mounted solutions. This illustration shows how a beam steering microphone can reach every participant regardless of their position in the room. The embedded LED lights are an indicator of where the audio is being picked up and helps the presenter know if they need to speak louder. For impromptu meetings, a smartphone can be quickly paired with the Lanubio via Bluetooth. Lanubio creates a more natural conversation as participants are facing the camera while speaking. In this slide, we'll point out that the settings can be controlled with a browser or from a third-party device. This is a typical system diagram. Lanubio can be powered by an AC adapter, 
or power over ethernet when used with a 60 watt power over ethernet injector. To recap, TOA's proprietary beam steering array microphone integrates DSP function, including auto echo cancellation and noise canceling. Stereo soundbar with auxiliary stereo audio inputs and outputs, built-in USB hub for webcam integration, Kodak input and output, and contact closure input and output, and a Bluetooth interface for wireless connections. And now Jim McGinnis will do a live demonstration from TOA headquarters in Secaucus, New Jersey. Good morning, everyone, and I thank you for uh, joining our seminar this morning. Today we're going to review some of the ins and outs of our new Lanubio soundbar processing system. So I'm going to start off with a demonstration in our room here today. The room that I'm sitting in is approximately 16 by 20. It's got about a nine foot ceiling. The ceiling is typical drop ceiling uh, tiles. The walls are sheetrock, but on one side I'm predominantly uh, all glass, looking out onto the giant stadium actually. And the rest of the room is a mix of glass and doors, et cetera. So pretty typical floors carpeted with concrete uh, base. And, you know, it's very typical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick walk around on the room. And I'm going to start from about four feet off to the right of Lanubio. Lanubio comes out of the box in its tracking array mode. So it's on a uh, seek and find mission. Uh, as audio pops up throughout the room and depending on how it is set. So I'm four feet off to the right. I'm going to back off now to about halfway in the middle of the room, so about 10 feet out. You should be able to hear me just fine. I'm going to come back to about 15 feet, and now I'm going to come back almost uh, to the back wall here, so maybe 19 feet or so, and you should be able to hear me without a problem. Also, angle shouldn't be an issue either. So I can be 90 degrees off to one side. I could be reflective. I could be working on the whiteboard that we have here. I can spin around and speak to you directly. So now maybe 17 feet or so, you know, almost the same distance. So here I'll come over to about 17 feet on the right side of the room. You should be able to hear me similarly. I'll come up about halfway, so about 10 feet or so on the left side of the room. Now I'm gonna be about four or five feet off to the left side of Lanubio, and I see that the tracking indicators are already moved and followed me throughout this whole presentation. I'm watching it track me as I go in front of the bar, and now I'm back to where I have started. In addition, Lanubio has the ability to pick up 180 degrees, so 90 off to either side. So I'm gonna show you that right now, I'm going to stand about maybe 80 degrees off on one side. I'm speaking out into the room. You should be able to hear me without any problem. And remember, Lanubio is a uh, multi uh, uh, design system so that it has to be able to pick up in, in multiple places. There are eight microphones behind the grill, uh, along with six speakers uh, that work as a return. So even though I'm off to one side, we have eight microphones, we've got seven other ones that'll be pointing out into the room, looking for other sounds for pickup, depending on the design of the calibration and settings in the background. So you, you could have people up at the whiteboard, you could have people at the table, shouldn't be a problem. I'll walk in front of Lanubio again, and now I'll come over to uh, the left side here and do the same thing, I'm speaking out into the room and the same principle applies, so the microphones would pick up wherever I am. And that's that's the basic walk around, and this is a very typical size uh, room. The Nubio is set uh, out of the factory to just a little bit less than this, uh, about 10 feet deep, but uh, we, we uh, of course, uh, enhanced it to about 18 feet or so. But it does 20 by 20, realistically, probably a couple feet more in either direction, depending on the materials in the room. So additionally with that, um, what we'll do here is we'll show you some of the things behind the scenes. And so on the back of Lanubio, you have uh, two connection points. One end is primarily contacts and audio. The other side is the digital connections, et cetera. So here um, on the left, you can see that we have audio left and right input. It's unbalanced. and um, 
that's uh, so that's convenient for a lot of sources, but we do feed it back out uh, as balanced because if you use ancillary uh, equipment in the room, you uh, typically would go balanced to reduce noise. We provide a codec in and out loop in case you have processing, and we have uh, two sets of contact inputs and outputs for uh, control. The contact inputs I'll show you, uh, the contact outputs I'll also be able to show you, and that's for integration. On the other end of the box, we have power. We have your Ethernet connection, USB 3.0, and a two-port hub uh, for USB. Convenient for using cameras, et cetera, uh, that may be mounted on the same wall as Lenubio, uh, such as I have here. I have a, a simple Logitech camera, uh, daisy chain through Lenubio. So that's what you'll see uh, on the back of the machine. And then we'll get into uh, what the machine has for adjustments, et cetera. So here you'll see that you have inputs and outputs. It's kind of a mirror, except for the output has speaker, speaker being the Lenubio bar itself. There are six speakers behind the bar, two, two groups of three. Each cluster has two full range and one tweeter. So in there, you can make adjustments for the EQ of the room. So if you go in, here's just an example of something. I have a high pass filter on the, on the low end, uh, a low pass filter on the high end, and just a little bump in the middle to show you something. And of course here, you know, you can change this to anywhere you want it to be. This is useful if you're gonna go in and ring out a room, if there's problems in the room, you can make adjustments for that. And or if you wanna make uh, some adjustments, you know, for enhancement. In some cases, you may want to have a meeting application, primarily more for speech. In other cases, what if the, the room's a little bit larger and there's going to be an after meeting a cocktail hour or something using the same space? You might play audio back, so therefore you may change the audio uh, acoustics for the settings here. So all of that is available uh, to you. And additionally, uh, Back to the mixer console, which is the default, by the way, when you log into the box, you'll also see that you have the, the same uh, EQ setting over here for, for auxiliary. Um, so you can, you can adjust any ancillary system that you connect up to this. Now this machine uh, does most of the work on this audio settings page. Here you'll see the orange section is the uh, active area for pickup. This is a microphone system like any other. It can pick up anywhere in the room, but it primarily targets wherever it is in the orange area. So the idea here is that things outside of that area uh, will not be targeted and will also be somewhat diminished in level. And you can point this anywhere you want as far as pickup. So let's say I wanted to you know, uh, do something like this Maybe I have a table over on one side of the room is where I want it to be picked up. Uh, the system will actively look in that area and not look in the others. The other thing that you can do is also uh, fix it to that point, which I'll show you momentarily. So we have uh, left, right, up, down type of adjustments. This is set to inches. Uh, it can also be set to metric. The sensitivity for pickup is low, medium, high, comes set to midpoint. All right, and steering mode I mentioned is set to array mode auto. Otherwise, here's your fixed mode where you can adjust which way you want the beam to, uh, to go or to be steered. So this is a manual setting, and that way you know, it's useful for you know, rooms that are a little bit off as far as placement of tables and equipment. All right. So uh, we normally leave that, again, in array mode. It's, it's the most popular, and it's as its main design anyway. We have acoustic echo cancellation in this box. Um, we usually recommend that you start with it off, because so many of the web conferencing systems have auto echo cancellation included. You can choose often which system you can use, uh, being ours or the conferencing system. But generally, you don't want to cascade them because then you get the uh, aisling effects and underwater sounds, et cetera, and so forth. So I suggest you start with it off. And if you have a, an echoing problem, then, of course, you'll know and you can turn it on and make adjustments. We, we do have uh, some finer adjustments for NLP and mic gain uh, for, you know, uh, 
fine lining the uh, AEC control. And then noise cancellation, uh, it comes also set to uh, midpoint, which is 9 dB. Uh, I have mine set to 6, so I have very little noise here, but you know, air, air handlers, etc., is, is helpful. So in, in my case, I have it set to 6, uh, but I could probably even turn it off. But that's a choice, so it's for best performance. And that's the core of where man, many of the uh, primary, you know, tracking and, uh, uh, you know, space adjustments are done. Preset is available to you. We have two active at any time, preset one, preset two. And you can also uh, tell the machine which preset to call upon power up. So either two are available. You can store many if you're doing installations and you have some set features that you like. You can have multiple ones and then just call them and load them. So those are the core pieces uh, of, uh, of Lanubio. But then we also have behind the scenes uh, items, which are uh, if this system is going to sit on a network, you can uh, choose what your network parameters are on this screen. Your administrator, which is admin, admin from default, you can change it here. And Bluetooth, we can name the Bluetooth now, uh, making it easier to locate. It's a new feature on version 1.5.0, which is what I'm using today. We go to the control section, those inputs I was talking about before. Here's what you can use them for, mute, uh, momentary relaxing, volume up and down, and preset one and two. So depending on what you want to do for contact closure. Output, if you want some uh, level of integration with other systems, you have mute status, sync in one, sync in two, can be used for lighting or screen drop or that type of thing. Then under uh, tracking, uh, LED indication, I should say, tracking, we have on or off. That's the LED bar that's behind the grill. So if it's found that uh, it's distracting in any way, uh, you can turn that off. It'll become a single LED uh, behind the grill. And then um, the mic gain indicator is that same LED glows brighter and softer. If there's no noise, it'll actually turn off. And that's a good indicator uh, for the presenter to know that they're speaking loudly enough. But again, it's, if it's a distraction, you can turn it off uh, in lieu of the uh, power and USB lights over on the right-hand side. Those will be your indicator that the system is up and running. I usually recommend that the input gain level stay on. That way, presenters in the room will know that uh, they're being picked up. We also have mute, which is uh, a different set, but similar looking set of lights behind the grill that lights up uh, seven segments, either uh, uh, or, or single segment uh, in red. So you have the choice to, to choose a, a full bar or a single LED uh, to know that the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, microphone is muted. Additionally, this latest version has key lock, and the key lock is so that once you have everything set, people can adjust things from the controls on the right side of the machine. And then the last screen that we have here is basically some uh, background maintenance, time dating. If we have a firmware update, uh, we will uh, typically post it to our website. If it hasn't been posted, of course, we can send it to you. Just uh, give us a call. We can uh, email that to you. But this one is 1.5.0. And lastly, what you'll find uh, very convenient is configuration data. So once you set up something, you can store that. The example I usually give is you got six huddle spaces you're going to set up, and they're all basically the same. So you spend the time getting the, the first run you know, set up properly, uh, pretty much where you want it. So you save your configuration. Now you can go to the other five and just upload it, and you're done. You don't have to spend the time making uh, adjustments, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it as far as uh, Lanubio goes. So I'd like to... Uh, Hand it back to Reed uh, for the question and answer session, and I thank you very much for attending today. Thank you so much. Uh, very informative. Uh, we didn't have a ton of questions, I think, uh, because you covered it so well. Uh, one of the questions, uh, let me see here. Um, so I guess there's another question just on verification of that room size, um, if you could just answer that again. Sure, so the, the machine has uh, the ability of 20 by 20. 
typically in practice, I find it'll it'll go a smidge more, a couple feet more in each direction. It depends on the layout of the room and where things are going to be set. Because realistically, um, you're going to look at the machine to you know pick up the active area in the room. So if the very back of the room is more of an entryway, you may not be really so much interested in that area. So you know in th in this particular room, you know I can cover the entire room because it's less than what the machine has as a parameter. But in in a room that's a little bit bigger than this, uh, you know it, it just depends on the application. Twenty by twenty is the official. The practical is a little bit more from from experience. Perfect. And another question about remote control. Um, was is there any um, IR capabilities or anything like that, or is it just the contact closures? Currently, the contact closures are what we're offering. We're working with an API uh, application right now that is supposed to be done, uh, last I heard, this month. And then um, that, that we're going to add in uh, some other manufacturers such as AMX and uh, I think uh, Extron and a few others. So we will have uh, Ethernet control. Perfect. Awesome. All right, I think that is it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for attending this month's FDW webinar series. Uh, if you could fill out the survey at the end, that would help us a lot. Thank you.